Good morning. Hi, Dr. Melody here with Fit Plus Faith. Good morning. I am just a few minutes late. I was wrapping up another call right before this, but happy Friday to you. I'm so excited to be here with you. And we are going through day 35 of our 72 day devotional. We are almost at the halfway point. Monday will be our halfway point. I can't believe it. And so we are going through day 35 of our Rooted in Christ Devo, our 72 days of diving into our identity in Christ. And so I am so excited to, this is a beautiful message today about God's abundance, about the abundance that the Lord has for you. And so um, it's going to be wonderful. So good morning, ladies. Great to see you here, Alex, Elizabeth. Awesome. Yes. As you're hopping on, go ahead and let us know where you're coming in from. We've got some ladies coming in from Alabama. I love it. Angela, great to see you. And okay, so let's dive in. Man, we're talking about a, a very short two verses in the book of Luke. However, they are powerful and they're so beautiful. Um, it is Jesus teaching and I'm going to read our declaration and then we may want to uh, shorten it a little bit because it is kind of long. Uh, but let's go through our declaration. Awesome. Alex is coming in from Chicago. I love it. So our, here's our declaration. I'll read it for you first. And then maybe we can decide how we want to shorten it. It says, I, insert your name, repeat after me. I, Melody, insert your name, have given and it is given to me. I have given and it is given to me. And it goes on to say, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, men give into my bosom. Men give into my bosom. So let's just shorten it to the very beginning of that and say, I, Melody, insert your name, have been given and it is given to me. This is going to go along with what we're about to read in Luke chapter six. So awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for his abundance. We give because he has given to us. And he tells us that when we give, he will give us even more. It's so beautiful. So let's pray and then we'll dive in. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your abundance. Thank you that you do not hold back for us. Thank you that you know and see all things and that your, your acts and your judgment and, your, and everything you do is righteous. It is just. Thank you that you know exactly what we need. You know what we need before we even ask. Thank you, God, that you are so big. We can't even hardly understand or fathom you. But your love for us is so overwhelming. It's so overwhelming. We, we praise you, God. We love because you first loved us. You chose us before we chose you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for just your unchanging nature, that you are good, that you are love. Those aren't just qualities you possess, but you embody the fullness of them. You know what we need. And in your wisdom, you choose to give. Thank you, Lord. We ask Holy Spirit that you just speak to me and through me in this message. Thank you so much for your good book, for your word that we have access to so freely today. What a blessing that is. What a blessing that is that for centuries, people did not have the fullness of your word, but we do. May we not take that for granted, God. May it not just lay as a book on our table or in a bookshelf, but that we will dive in and we will allow ourselves to be immersed in it and that we will receive from you, that you just pour so much back out to us when we dive into your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts with exactly what we need to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Yes, ladies, you're already on it. You're already on it. You, you give and it has been given to you. You have given and it has been given to you. So that's our declaration for today. Let's dive into Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And if you haven't yet, shared this out. If you haven't yet invited some friends or tagged some friends, go ahead and do that below as well. We're diving into Luke chapter six, verses 37 and 38. Jesus is talking about criticizing others. 
So this is the section right here. Luke chapter 6, verses 37 and 38. He says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. These are powerful words in these two verses. These are so powerful. There is so much here. Do not judge, do not condemn, and you will not be judged, and you will not be condemned. You know, it's just starting there. Forgive, and you will be forgiven, right? We love others because we have been loved first by God. We forgive others because we have first been forgiven by Him. Man, I remember coming across these verses a few years back and they set me free. <laughs> these little verses set me free. I was stuck in a place, this was four to five years ago now probably, I was stuck in a place of my physical health where I was completely judgmental of everyone and everything including myself. Like all of the judgment I was giving myself for not looking a certain way, for not making the best decisions for my health, you know, for not eating the best, um, you know, for not, you know, exercising, whatever that was. I was so judgmental against myself for those things that I was judging everyone else accordingly. And it was awful. Like I was stuck in this cycle unable to be happy, unable to be free, unable to be satisfied. I was so unhappy and, and I realized every way that I was judging myself, I was judging others. So I would immediately be judging others on their looks and on their, you know, appearance because I was so harshly judging myself. I was judging what everyone else around me was eating or drinking because I was judging myself, you know, and it, it was awful. <laughs> And then I got to these verses and it says, it says at the end, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't ever want to be judged by anyone else the way that I am judging them and the way that I'm judging my own self. I don't want other people to do that to me. And so I was able to realize how of an awful cycle I was in and pray for the Lord to release me and heal me from that. And he completely set me free. And I no longer have any of that judgment anymore. <laughs> I have love. I have acceptance. I have compassion. I have empathy. I have all these beautiful things to give to others because that's how I see them, because that's how I see me, because I finally see myself the way he sees me. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I don't know if you've ever been caught or are still caught in that judgmental place, but it's not your place. It's not your place. Your place is to love and to forgive because that is what he has done for you. Your place is not to condemn or to judge. That is for him to do. You are to love. You are to show love and compassion to others. You are to be the hands and feet of Jesus to them. You are to speak his truth and life into their life. That is what you are to do. But any of the things that you are judging others and unforgiving others is going to be you're, you're keeping yourself trapped. For by the measure you give it out, it will be given back to you. Are you being stingy with your love? Are you being stingy with your forgiveness and your compassion and your grace? 
The way that you are being that to other people is how it will be given to you. And I don't, I don't want anything holding back from God pouring those things all over me. I want to feel the fullness of what he has to offer and to give and the freedom that he has for me. So therefore, I, I cannot hold back in how I pour that onto others because that is how I want it to be poured onto me by him. Does that make sense? And it, it just, those truths just set me free. I don't need to judge others. I don't need to judge myself. I need to show love and, and compassion and forgiveness for myself and for others. That's it. It's not my place. There is no condemnation in Christ. Why do I keep condemning myself? Why do I keep condemning others when that's not my job? That's not my role. Our role is different from the Holy Spirit's role. It's different from God's judgment. It's different from the conviction that the Holy Spirit will do in someone's life. That's not my job. My job is to love, to forgive, to show mercy, grace, compassion, and to live my life in freedom so that God can fully use me to pour out into others in the way that he wants to. And I don't want anything to be blocking that. I don't want anything. I don't want myself above all else to be blocking that in my life. Because listen to what he says, give, give, and it will be given to you. But listen to this, listen to how beautifully it will be given to you. It's going to be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, poured into your lap. It is to be an abundance of giving back to you. It is to, you will be given more than what you give. That's how I read that. I'm going to give and God's going to go above and beyond in his giving back to me. So why would I hold back then in as much giving as I possibly could? Giving of myself, giving of my love, giving of my resources, giving of my time so that I can receive all of these things and more as blessings from the Lord. When it talks about um, press down, shaken together, running over, it reminds me of like an olive press or a grape press. You know how much they, they fill that thing to the max and then they press it down and the oil comes out and then they, they keep pressing, they keep mashing, they keep pulverizing and shaking it down and making sure that there's no empty space whatsoever to squeeze every last bit out of that, out of that olive or out of that grape so that they get everything. So much coming out that it's, it's just, it's flowing over. It's trying to get every last drop. And that's what he says is given to you. No holding back. No holding back. He's not holding back from you. So don't hold back in the way that you are loving and giving and, and forgiving to others. Because he doesn't want to hold back from you. But the measure you give, it will be measured back for you. Well, I don't want any stinginess from God. I don't want any stinginess from God. I don't want, I want my measure to be so big that I know that's the measure I'm getting back from him. So good. All of that in two, two little verses. Oh my goodness. Jordan, what is up girl? Newly married. Jordan says, looks like God wants me to hear this message today <laughs> at the right place at the right time. Uh, you can't wait to get the book. Oh, I'm so glad might be a good one to go over in our women's small group. That is wonderful. Oh, so good. We're so excited to have you here, girl, and so excited for your new uh, marriage as well and just stepping into a new beautiful season in life. So good. Yes, exactly. Showing us how to love and forgive ourselves so that we can move forward doing that for others as well. Oh, man, Elizabeth says... My stepmom was awful to me the decade she was married to my dad. It's been 12 years since you've last seen her. Last night, 12 hours ago, you prayed for her and that she can find peace and not be so miserable and that you forgive her for what she had made you live through. Not forgiving her is one thing I have just never been ready to do. 
but it was finally time and it was so freeing. Praise the Lord. Praise God for you, Elizabeth. Forgiveness, it doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean it's easy, but we are commanded to do it. But what's so beautiful is that when we get to that place and when we're ready, when we finally get to that place and we're ready, it frees us. It doesn't matter if the other person cares. It doesn't matter if they even know. It doesn't matter if they never asked. It doesn't matter anything to do with them. It's the releasing for you. It's the releasing for you to the fullness of forgiveness that you could say, I even wish the best for you. I even want good things for you. I want God to heal and move powerfully in your life. Even if I never know about it, even if I never get to see it, I still want those things for you. And I'm able to forgive. Even if I was never asked, I'm able to finally forgive. And so that I am free. We forgive not because it's easy and not because we don't care. We forgive because we have been forgiven first. God has forgiven everything we have ever done or will ever do if we ask him. If we ask him, he will forgive everything. And he's been ready to do that long before you were even born. He knows and has seen your life and he is ready and has already paid the price for you through Jesus so that when you receive that gift and when you choose to receive his forgiveness, he is ready to forgive you. He has forgiven us first. That is why we can forgive others because his love for us is so great. And we don't want anything blocking that in our life. And forgiveness frees us. Man, it frees us. Yes, ladies. Yes, ladies, cry it out. Do what you need to do. Let the tears flow. Like tears are so healing. Tears are so healing. They communicate to God in ways that we never, ever could. Have you ever seen this? I've, I've shared this at one point, but it's been so long. Have you ever seen this? They have done microscopic images of tears and they have taken tears that come from different emotions. So tears that were cried in anger, tears that were cried in uh, pain, tears that were cried in joy. Uh, they've taken tears that have been, that have come from different emotions and they have like microscopically looked at them and studied them and the tears themselves have different chemical makeup, not, not chemical makeup. They have different patterns in their, um, in their creation. Like it's outrageous. You can see a tear from anger and bitterness, the tear, it's like how a snowflake looks different. It looks like, it looks angry. It looks like um, really spiky and um, just like really intense. And then you see a tear that was cried in happiness or love or laughter, right? Or joy. And the tear itself, like a snowflake, looks beautiful. <laughs> It, that you cannot believe that the tears themselves look different based on what emotion they came from. Is this not absolutely incredible to you? Like our tears communicate to God without us ever having to speak a word. Our tears do communication for us. It is so unfathomable to me <laughs> how intricate and integrated our entire life is. Our mind and our body so integrated that even our tears look different when they come from different emotions. And so don't 
hold the tears back is what I'm saying. Allow them to be expressed because they're releasing you, they're healing you, they're communicating to the Lord on your behalf. So whatever that is, let them go. Yes, a tear is worth a thousand words. God knows what they mean. He knows what emotion they were expressed in. And so don't let them, don't push them back. <laughs> Allow them to be. Allow them to be expressed. They're trying to get out of you. And they need to. They need to be expressed. But you don't have to speak it. You don't have to justify it. You can just feel it and allow your body to do it for you. It's really incredible. Yes, Angela, let the tears flow and he will pour his love on us. Yes, man. Oh, I've been so moved by the Holy Spirit in the past that um, I went to this retreat a few years back and, oh gosh, my phone is going to die at some point soon. I went to this retreat a few years back and I was so overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. He was doing such a move in my heart and was releasing me and healing me from so many things and reviving dreams and just doing all this beautiful stuff that I had pushed down and, and you know, thought was gone. And for like two days straight, I just couldn't stop crying. <laughs> That's how I felt. I'm sure there were moments in there where I wasn't crying, but for two days straight at this retreat, I just cried and cried and cried and cried. And anybody would say anything and I would just cry. And people were concerned, you know, is she okay? Like, but I couldn't stop it and I couldn't hold it back. And I knew that I wasn't supposed to. I knew that I wasn't supposed to. I was supposed to allow the tears to wash through me and to express the pain and, and, and the healing and everything that I was experiencing to allow the tears to do their work because I knew that the Holy Spirit was breaking something free and was cleansing me in that moment. And so it was so, it was so powerful. It was so beautiful. And so, so I have a new phone guys. <laughs> So it's making noises and I have no idea what it means yet. So I apologize for that. I'm trying not to get distracted by it. Anyway, all that to say, <laughs> let your tears do what they need to do and, and allow yourself to sit in these verses this morning of God saying, let, let him be the judge. Your job is to forgive and to love. Free yourself from judgment and condemnation of yourself and of others. Forgive and you will be forgiven as you already are. And then he will give. You give and he will give it back to you in an abundance of what you ever gave. But the measure that you give it out is what will be given to you. So don't hold back. Don't hold back because his desire is to not hold back from you. So good. He's so good. He loves us so much. He loves us so much. He wants us to be free. He wants us to experience him. He wants us to experience the depths of his love, of his transformation, of his grace, of his mercy, of his power. That's what he wants for us. Because if you can fully experience it, then he knows that you will share that out and you will be that light for someone else. It's never just for your healing. It's never just for your experience. It's very personal to you, but it's never just for you. It is so that it will pour out of you. It will help to heal and set someone else free when you share your story. Man, so good, so good. So yay, thank you ladies. Okay, your declaration for today. If you haven't yet spoken it out, if you haven't yet typed it below, I, insert your name, Melody, right? Tanya, Angela, I have given and it is given to me. I have given and it is given to me. That's the short version, all right? If you've got your Devo, you see the, the full declaration there. You've got your deeper reflection questions. You've got your journaling space. Head to rootedinchristbook.com and grab yours on Amazon to continue to go deeper in this journey for yourself. Someone can type that down below, rootedinchristbook.com. That'll take you there. But I, Melody, have given and it is given to me. Man, so good. Jordan says, I was once hit in the face by a very close family member. Is that literal or figurative? Oh my goodness. Oh yes, it was literal. Broke your face. Oh girl. 
The second day happened, I was never upset or mad. He was wonderful and you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and he was going through a lot. You forgave him the second it happened, but for 15 years, you've always waited for an apology. Oh my goodness, this past year I realized maybe he can't forgive himself and needs to know that he was forgiven. You spoke with him and realized how severe that truth actually was and that he not only couldn't forgive himself, but he was in denial. I hope my forgiveness expressed sets him free from those chains. And after doing this, I have been as well from the expectation on an apology. Exactly. Yeah, you, you cry and you hurt for him, but you know that you have done what you needed to do to forgive him and, and praying that he will get to that place to be able to forgive himself as well and receive forgiveness from the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Oh, so good. Yes, Jordan says, tears are healing waters. I fully agree. All right, ladies, thank you so much for being here with me today. I will see you on Monday for day 36. Join me Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. Tag a friend, share this out. I'll see you later.